Right, hello and uh, welcome. This is the uh, next instalment. Sorry, just make it so you can see there. Uh, this is about, as we said, we've done in the previous video, uh, we've done a little bit about uh, photoelectricity and excitation, decitation. Uh, sorry, that's what we're doing today. Yeah, so today we're doing excitation, decitation. Uh, all, all that, and that's just the way I say it, but you know, deal with it. So, the excitation of atoms. So, uh, what do we mean by that? Well, uh, what an excitation is when an, an electron in the in a shell uh, of an atom uh, moves up or moves down depending on excitation or decitation, which it is, and I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. Um, uh, inside an electron. So let's draw. This isn't very representative of an atom, but it's what you taught at sort of. Uh, Key stage four ish, I think. So, obviously, I've not been there. So, yeah, um, I just, I'll go through uh, what all these th mean in a minute. And obviously, the crosses are the electrons, but really it should be minus, but I'm just doing it child's play, so you can um, sort of, it seems a bit more familiar to you. Right, I'm only going to do three um, energy states inside this atom. Right, it's going to have two A A. I mean, obviously, they could go more into the chemistry side of that, but we're not going to today. So uh, that is a very, very basic, uh, simplified version of an atom. All these crosses are said of electrons. Why have I called it the smallest one, N one? Uh, N2 and N3. Well, the N represents the energy state in an atom. So N1, as you can see, is the middle or the smallest circle it appears to be. Uh, so it has the lowest energy uh, level of um, the atom. So N1 is something what we call the ground state. Now, the ground state is just uh, the lowest um it's the orbit in which the electron has the lowest amount of energy. So uh, no electron uh, that is above the ground state can have uh, a lower energy uh, than the electrons in the ground state. It just simply cannot happen. You know, an electron will go, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm not having any more energy. No, no, I'm not having any more energy than the guy above me. Well, you know, that's what they do. That's how electron world works. Stubborn they are. Anyway, so N1 is the ground state. Now, we said about excitation and decitation. We haven't really mentioned it. Well, if an electron <coughs> wants to live, <coughs> he'll probably survive, <coughs> like me. So, um, if an, say if we've got an electron. Uh, I know this would never happen. I'm just giving you an example. So, if we wanted to... Cause I'm saying that because there's an eight, uh, eight shells and eight electrons on the second shell. Um, and obviously, we can't add one, but... And just for this purpose we're going to. So if an electron from N1 wanted to get to N2, so N equals 1 to N equals 2, there's an energy difference uh, between these two uh, energy states in the atom. Now, you don't need to necessarily know unless it tells you uh, what levels uh, these are. You just need to know that they're the lowest and each one gets a bit higher as it gets away. So, um, yeah. So there's an energy difference between these, and there's the same energy difference each time. It's going up uh, by the same amount each time, I think. Is that right? Oh. No, 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 sorry. There's just an energy difference between... Sorry, I got wrong. So, there's just an energy difference between these two uh, energy states. So, w one way an atom can get excited, not by seeing a nice young nice girl on uh, on the street or anything but uh, it's a difference between uh, these two energy states so we can say um, say yeah it gets absorbed by a, f a photon is absorbed uh, as, as that is energy equal to E equals HF and obviously doing our previous video uh, we should know a little bit about photons so E equals HF now as I said E equals the energy level 
And there's a certain energy difference that it has to fill. It can't fill half of it, otherwise it won't get to the next stage. It won't be able to excite the atom with sufficient energy. So uh, we need E equals, say this is energy state 2 and energy state 1. E2, take E1. So the energy state of uh, the second shell, take the energy state of the first shell, or the ground state, is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. So you can work out from this, if you're given the energy state of the second level, and the energy state of the first level, you can work out uh, what frequency the photon must have uh, for it to be uh, excited by that incorrect amount. And obviously, uh, if an electron, another way that it can be excited is by an electron um, moving to this one by when I, if I crash into another person, um, a person will go, hey, you just transferred out of her, you know, because I'm quite, Ugh. but it's gonna, they're going to feel some force, so I'm transferring some energy. So if an electron just came in, it was like, oh, I don't care, I'm, you know, I'm living the life, and just went straight and banged into one of these electrons, went, bang, brother, you know, it's going to go, ow, you're going to get, oh, you Mr. Electron, you need to, you need to quiet down, you. So it's going to gain some uh, el el uh, uh, energy even for the ground state. Now, if it's equal to the energy between the two states, then um, the electron will be excited in a similar way. But unlike this, because we can't, there is an energy level, there's no formula uh, for uh, the energy difference apart from E2, take E1, and that doesn't really equal anything, just equals energy difference. Whereas that equals HF because it's the energy of a photon and we know the energy of a photon equals HF so we combine these two uh, in terms of the energy difference uh, between the two states to get to get that, that's how we've got that. So an energy, an electron can uh, have an impact so but it isn't absorbed unlike a photon, it's just the energy it's absorbed uh, so that's how it transfers uh, a state if you like it that way. So that's uh, one way. There are two ways that an electron uh, and a photon can be sort of ex ex the atom can be excited. Now I'm going to leave that on, but uh, if we excited everything in the world, eventually we'd have uh, no ground state, and then that'd be the next ground state, and you just slowly uh, just push uh, states away from the, the very core, uh, the nucleus of the atom, which is. Uh, not going to be good for anyone because that means we'll just expand and one day you'll wake up and you'll go Ooh, I've absorbed too many photons, the light is bad for me, sort of thing. So, um, if we don't want that to happen, we have to assume that they are de-excited at some stage. You can only stay excited for so long before uh, before they go back to the original state. Well, that's just like, one of the laws of physics you need to know. So. When it goes back down, what does it do? Um, if we... Well, actually, it doesn't matter which time it's excited. It releases a photon, again, equal to these two energy states. Because, as we know from the conservation of energy, uh, energy can't be uh, created or destroyed uh, in a... Uh, yeah, in the universe. So we are we emit a photon. Uh, this is a sort of a virtual photon, if you like, uh, because you can physically see uh, the light coming from. Uh, say, if you've got classroom light, uh, this is, uh, for example, one. It's got mer mercury vapor in you, and the ones they have to spend years and years throwing away. The big long tubes that uh, run, you know, long tubes that. Oh, that look wrong, but the long tubes that uh, run along the roof of your classroom, if you have a classroom. So, they are, they contain mercury vapour inside of them tubes. So, when it, uh, we send electrons, pew, pew, <coughs> as you can tell, I become a man at this stage. So, the electrons fire out uh, at quite high velocity. Work out KE if you want to, but, you know, whatever you want to do. So, yeah. So the electrons shoot out of the circuit and they enter the mercury vapour which has got uh, mercury atoms such as this could be a mercury atom, it's not representative, the, there's too many, there's not, not the right amount of atoms, uh, not the right amount of electrons and shells but never mind, I think, I don't think that's mercury, no, isn't it? So uh, yeah, 
So it ex these ex electrons crash into these mercury atoms, exciting them. And then they de-excite uh, after a while, because as we said, um, they have to go back to the original ground, the original state the electron was in. Because uh, energy can be can only use it up for so long before it goes back to the original state. And it emits a photon. And as I said, it emits a light photon, and that's how uh, lights work. Except it's so fast and so violent sort of thing, you don't really see it. All you see is it a constant light. That's why when you switch a classroom light on, it just goes boom, 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 boom. And you know, obviously it doesn't raise up like the Death Star or something. I'm just, just trying to give you an example there. So uh, that, that sort of basic understanding of excitation and decitation of atoms. Let me see if I've missed anything. Oh yeah, um, we just need to go on something called uh, ionisation. So, uh, you should know from your GCSE studies that ionisation is when an atom uh, loses or gains an electron. In this case, when we assume it gains an electron. Now, as I said, uh, these uh, shells have higher energy levels as we go uh, outward to the shell. Now, for, therefore, obviously, for an, an electron to gain uh, such amount of high energy to escape uh, the Atom. It has to be on the most outer shell with the most highest energy level, and that is equal to the energy of the ground state. That doesn't. Never mind. But obviously, it's going to be negative, so it's going to be but uh, positive, of course. I don't know why it says that in the book, but that's what it says. So it's got to be equal to the ground state of the atom, which it makes. No sense to my mind, but it's just what it says in the book. So ho hopefully that's sort of um, gone over flesh and tubes, ground state. Wait, wait, sorry. Sorry guys, just um, give me a minute. Right, so um, I'm just going to do a thing, uh, well, well you would have seen it by now. Uh, just at the start of this uh, tutorial, because I, I've got something wrong and I need to, I need to edit it out. Right, um, I'm going to say, uh, oh wait, actually this is the end. I'll put this in at the end, so um, I may have said I was going to get something wrong, but actually I didn't. Uh, in the book, these N1 is actually negative EEV uh, electron volts, so it just goes slowly uh, greater as you get towards the outside, which is what I said. So, yeah. That, that was just clearing out for you. So it is negative, as I said, this is negative 13.6, for example, negative 4.8 and, and 0 on this side. And the, for it to excite, has to have the positive 13.6, uh, for example. Just uh, that was all I needed to say.